Hello, everybody. It's me, Shannon LaBruyere. I am live and loving it. Welcome to Sunday Night Live, where we explore the principles that equip us to thrive in change. The change we want, the unexpected change, the change we planned and didn't turn out the way we wanted. All manner of change from the smallest to the greatest. We explore the principles that allow us to be strong and good. And I want to welcome you. Thank you for being here. Hi, Kelly. I'm glad you're here. You're the first one to say hi in the comments. So welcome. If you are new to Sunday Night Live, I invite you to allow StreamYard to use your name and profile picture and say hi in the comments. Oh, hi, Carol. Carol's ready for tonight. I am too. Um, thanks to those of you who reached out and said you really enjoyed our best of Sunday Night Live last week about core beliefs. Uh, it's one of my favorites and I'm glad that it it helps you. And I was able to spend some really great time with my sister in Florida and my dad, uh, who is in a nursing home there. And so it was just a great long weekend for me to be able to connect with my family. And as much as I loved that, I missed you guys and I'm really glad to be back. So thank you. All right. So tonight, our Thrive Principle that we are going to explore is trust the process. Hashtag trust the process. There are so many processes at work in our lives. And when we become aware of them, we can then intentionally tweak them so that they suit us better. And so we are going to talk tonight about sort of a process that we can use to take action even when we're afraid. And I'm really excited to share it with you. So keep that in mind. Hashtag trust the process. We're going to learn about a process tonight and you are going to love it. The next thing is Thank you to our sponsor, Thumb Roast Coffee. It's delicious, you guys. I drink it every morning and I look forward to it beginning when I put my head on the pillow. I just can hardly wait to wake up and have my delicious Thumb Roast Coffee. So if you are passionate about your morning cup of coffee, or if you know somebody who is, go to thumbroastcoffee.com and order some delicious Sanilac Sunrise or Blue Lake, my two favorites, and use the coupon code THRIVE, T-H-R-I-V-E, and you'll get 15% off. And you will enjoy it. The person that you gift it to will enjoy it. And what's really great is if you're trying to gift somebody who lives across the country, you save, you don't have to send them another gift. They'll ship it straight to them. So take advantage of that, that convenience, but also getting something that's so delicious that they will love that is a really high-end experience. Thank you, Selmer's Coffee, for sponsoring us here at Sunday Night Live and Thrive and Change Podcast. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate the delicious coffee that you roast. All right, let's see what we want. Oops, hold on. Let me fix that. I'm out of practice, you guys. Yay, here we are. Welcome. Thank you for jumping in. We are talking today about it's the same roller coaster. It's the same roller coaster. So when I went to Florida for my long weekend. My sisters, I have um, was able to connect with one of my sisters who lives in Florida. And then I traveled with one of my sisters who lives in Michigan. And we went to see my father at the nursing home. And then before we left, we went to Universal Studios Amusement Park. Anybody been there? Anybody been to Universal Studios Amusement Park? Give it a thumbs up or a heart. Um, we went to the Islands of Adventure and Universal's, I think it's called Universal Studios side. Um, anyway, we went to two parks, my sisters and I, and we had a really good time. It was spring break, so it was crowded. We didn't think about that before we booked our fare. <laughs> Carol's never been to Universal Studios. It's down there next door to Walt Disney World. Um, anyway, 
we got in line to ride a roller coaster. And I don't mind roller coasters, really. Um, I've been on some. I, I rode uh, all of the roller coasters at Cedar Point, and I enjoyed every one of them until the one where my where my legs were swinging. I cannot remember what that was called, but it was hideous. And I was scared beyond belief. And I said I would never do it again. Never do it again. I was so frightened. Just I drew the line. I drew the line. Anybody else been there? You you go on a ride at an amusement park and you say, oh yeah, that's not happening again. No, 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 no. Well, when we went to Universal Studios, oh, Carol says she's been on the Rob, which I think is that at Six Flags or Kings Island? Oh, the Raptor. It is the Raptor Carol at Cedar Point, and that is hideous. I hated that ride. Okay, but that's just me. But we're going to talk about that. We are going to talk about that. So I remembered how I felt on the Raptor, and I thought I was destined to die. Uh, just me. Uh, you know, there were hundreds and thousands of people who had ridden that ride even the same day I rode it. But I just, I just was convinced I was the one who was going to go flying across Lake Erie. And it scared the fire out of me. So fast forward, we're at Universal Studios and they have a relatively new roller coaster there and it's called Hagrid's Motor Bike Experience or Extravaganza. It involves, you guys, a motorcycle. So you're on like a motorcycle that has a sidecar. <laughs> and so you're sitting on this roller coaster. It's a motorcycle. And all you have is you have a lap thing that comes down tight across your lap. I'm looking at this. And then you're doing almost going totally upside down on this roll, um, motorcycle slash roller coaster thing. And the effect is supposed to be that you are flying through the air. And I was I was all gangbusters to get on, you guys. I couldn't wait to get out of that. Okay, this is going to be fun. But as we waited in the two-hour line, um, I started getting a change of heart. And so when we got almost to the, the time to get on, I told my sisters, you know, I, I think I'm going to just sit in the sidecar. And my sister Megan said, oh, no, you're not. She said, you've waited in a two-hour line. You are going to ride the motorcycle. So I decided I would. And here's where the fear kicks in, you guys. Here's where the fear kicks in. Here are hundreds of people lined up. They can't wait to get on this roller coaster. It's going to be fantastic. They love it. They know it. They can't wait. And I was dreading it, feeling almost close to tears, having this panic thing on my chest. It's the same roller coaster. It's the same roller coaster. So what's the difference? Why, why were they able to look forward to being on it and enjoying the experience? And for two hours, I had from various vantage points as I queued through that line, I had been able to see people all shapes and sizes. There were big men doing it. There were relatively young kids doing it. Um, there were just people having a great time flying these motorcycles on this roller coaster. And yet here I am almost feeling like I'm going to break down. What's the difference? Because the roller coaster is the same. Has that ever happened to you? Has that ever happened to you where you're looking around thinking, why is nobody else in a panic? Because I'm I'm feeling it. <laughs> it's it's because fear has attached itself to our story. The story we are telling ourselves about that ride is a fearful story. And so as I'm in this line, now I've got about 15 minutes till it's my turn to get on that motorcycle. I started thinking about how I coach and some of the people that I've coached and how they've been really afraid to take some of the action that they took. And here I am coaching them and saying, you've got to do it afraid. Just lean in 
and do it afraid. Everything good is on the other side of fear. Go, go, go. And that is 100% true. And I thought about the times that my coach has said that to me. Shannon, you can do this. Put it out there. Let people sign up. See what happens. It's going to be okay. Everything good's on the other side of fear. And I've done it. But for some reason, I had never connected that to this roller coaster. I had never put two and two together that that same process, and here we are at hashtag trust the process, the same process that I use to coach my clients, to coach myself, or that my coaches use for me to encourage me, it's the same process. Change the story that you're going to tell yourself and lean in and get past the fear. Everything good lies on the other side of fear. I love what Maslow says about fear. He said, we are constantly as people making the choice. Are we going to step forward into growth or backward into safety? Forward into growth or backward into safety? And so my wheels got turning and I thought, you know what? What would happen if I stopped telling myself the story that I could die on this ride? Because thousands and thousands of other people have ridden it and they've lived. So there's really low risk. It might look risky, but it's not. I'm going to be alive when I get off. It'll be fine. They all are fine. I was able to look at those other people and say, look at them. They're doing just fine. Those little kids are doing fine. Those grownups are doing fine. I was able to observe other people have done it and they weren't having the same kind of fear that I had or they had conquered it. And I used the process that I used in coaching to address a physical fear, that fear of riding that roller coaster. So you guys, this is what I did. And it was awesome. I got on that motorcycle and every time, every, every time I could see a scary dip or a curve or a go upside down or sideways, every time I saw that ahead, I chose to lean forward into it. I actually leaned on that motorcycle like I wanted it to go faster and said out loud, I'm a big fan of talking out loud. Yes, yes, yes. And I leaned in to that roller coaster ride. And I started to feel the exhilaration. I knew I was safe. I knew I was safe. I wasn't really risking anything. And so I stopped telling myself the story that I was going to die and started telling myself the story that I was going to thrive. I was going to enjoy it. I was going to do something that I'd never done before and it was going to be fun. That simple, you guys, that simple, but that powerful. So I'm inviting you right now. What story are you telling yourself about that thing that you're afraid to do? What story have you told yourself? Because the thing is the same. Are you afraid to sign up for college? Are you afraid to leave a, 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 an abusive relationship? Are you afraid to leave a safe and secure job that's sucking your soul dry? Other people have left jobs, left abusive relationships. They've started college. They're okay. You're going to be okay too. And especially when we combine it with our core belief that God is for me. <laughs> when I know that God is for me, there is no such thing as risk. There is no such thing. God is for me. So where are you going to take a look at the fear that's been preventing you from taking action? Where are you going to look at that and start telling yourself a different story? Because fear isn't real. 
it's not real. You know, I suppose if, you know, a rabid dog is coming at us, that's real fear, right? I'm talking about the fear that comes at us when our lives aren't really being threatened. When it just feels like the terror barrier is so strong that we'll never get past it. And in reality, other people do those things hundreds and thousands of times a day. We can take great strength looking at other people and seeing that they have done it and they're thriving. Where could you change the story you're telling yourself so that you're able to take the action you need to take to have the life you know you want? Drop it in the chat. I invite you, take a moment, think about that. What area of your life do you want to apply this principle to? That it is possible to choose to lean in to the change, lean in to the excitement of it, not shrink back in fear. We can lean in and move forward into growth or we can shrink back into what we feel like is safety. But it's the same roller coaster, you guys. It's the same one. I'm afraid of it. The person next to me isn't. I loved the graphic that went along with the Facebook announcement that I put out about tonight's broadcast. I love it. If you haven't seen it, check it out on Facebook. It's on my uh, Thrive and Change page. I love it so much. Um, it is a picture of two people sitting side by side on a roller coaster. And it is such a clear illustration of how one person can be terrified and the other person can be exhilarated. And they're on the same roller coaster. <laughs> Carol said she loved it too. <laughs> and Carol also says that Kelsey, her daughter, loved the raptor. So there you go. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Who wants to share? Where are you going to stretch? Ah, Carol's the terrified one in the roller coaster. Yeah. And you know, there's nothing that says we have to ride roller coasters. But I will tell you this, practicing facing fear and overcoming it helps make us strong. It helps us get really good at the process of dealing with fear. When our lizard brain rears up and says, don't do it, you're going gonna, you're gonna to crash, it's going to be terrible. And it's not truly a life-threatening thing. When we practice looking that fear in the face and saying, fear, I see you, but I choose love. I know that what I've got to do is more important than the fear that you're throwing up in my face. I'm going to choose to move forward. Your dream, your vision, your personal self-worth, all of that is worth overcoming fear to preserve and overcoming fear to grow. Uh, Carol says she's done it, but she's still terrified. Yeah, that happens, right? Practice makes perfect meaning, maybe. Um, and she says that this kind of teaching has helped, right, Carol? Um, the things that I teach my clients, the things that I share with the live stream leadership members, they really do help all of us, including me, start getting strong at doing things afraid and taking action, even though we may be afraid of the unknown. We're all on the same roller coaster. You get to choose the story you tell yourself about it. Has your company just dissolved? Has it been bought out and now you've got all new management coming in? You're all in the same roller coaster. How can you lean into that and find the beauty is at play here too, right? There's some really awful things that come along with those kind of un unwanted changes. Absolutely. But how can you find the beauty and lean into that knowing that God is for you and so that the changes that you seek to make He's on your side. He's going to help you. <laughs> He's going to help you. You are not alone. I just am so tickled when I think about how afraid I was to get on that motorcycle. And when I 
popped that seat down and looked next to me and realized that my legs weren't dangling, Carol, but my my side was all open. Like I felt like I could have stuck my leg out and that was not a great feeling. And then making the choice to tell myself a different story. Everybody else has been safe on this ride. I am safe. And knowing that I'm safe, what would I, could I do to make this fun? Knowing that I'm safe, what could I do to make this fun? We are safe. We are safe. And making those choices that we have to get past fear to be able to move forward toward our dreams, toward our fulfillment, toward the manifestation of our destiny, when we have to take action to get past that fear, understanding that we are safe allows us to do that. So that's one of the keys, knowing we are safe. The next key is knowing that others have done it too and finding those people. Whether you're looking them up on YouTube or reading their books, who has done what you do? And we can see if they made it, so could we. One of my favorite organizations is called Blue Water Recovery. It's BW Rock. I can't remember what it stands for. But it's, it's Blue Water Recovery um, something. But it is an, an, an organization located in Port Huron, Michigan, that is committed to effectively helping people who have addictions to recover and to recover in a lasting, meaningful way. And their approach to that recovery process is innovative. It's genuine. It is so beautiful. It is amazing. I love to see their posts on Facebook. I love to talk with their, um, I think he's the C, the, um, I don't know if he's the chairman. I can't remember, but um, his name is Pat. <laughs> can't remember his role, but he's certainly the driver. He's in the driver's seat of BW Rock. If somebody knows that, oh, there it is, bwrock.org. Thank you, Carol, for posting that. Fantastic stuff. Those people have found the power in connecting those that struggle with addiction to those who have recovered, those who have beat it, those who are living sober and building lives and adding value to their world. They base their community on that connection because those people who are struggling and afraid to make the change, how could I ever live without that substance? Physically, mentally, emotionally, and they can look at people who have done it afraid and who are safe and who are able and it inspires them and that community and that connection is so powerful if you have to find if if you have a change that you are afraid to make you have to find people who are going to be brave for you and show you it can be done it can be done you need support you need support. It was so powerful. And I, I loved, I loved how I was able to draw that connection, that physical activity of riding that roller coaster. It just, it was like it lit something up in me. It, it showed me something so powerful about myself that I need to apply this idea to everything I'm afraid to do. Look at the people who have done it afraid. Be inspired by their pros progress. Understand that there is no risk, that God is for me. And do it afraid. And then the fear goes away. The fear goes away. Leaning in. It just was amazing. I, I, just, I just loved it. And I couldn't wait to share it with you. Because, folks, fear will keep you from every good thing. And you will reach the end of your days and look back. And I believe that many people will regret what they didn't do because of fear. You are risking nothing. When you are pursuing your dream, the risk that you're taking is infinitesimal. It is so small. 
you being brave and doing it afraid, Carol, doing it afraid, taking that action and then watching what happens to you as you grow and expand and the results you get from the actions you take is it's addictive. <laughs> it's a good kind of addicting. What are you going to apply this principle to? What are you going to look at in your life and say, you know what? I've been afraid to do that. And I'm on the same roller coaster as everybody else. If they can enjoy it, so can I. If they can find a new job, I can find a new job. If they can start a new career, I can start a new career. If they can go get their degree, I can go get my degree. I used to network with a guy who he started his career as an engineer and he did not like it. He didn't like the upheaval in, he was working in the audio industry. He didn't like the upheaval of that. He didn't like that they were always getting laid off and he was always worried about his job. And so he took a look at his career and in his thirties decided, you know what? I'm going to be a doctor. <laughs> and he went back to school and he became a foot surgeon. It was a risk, but he pursued what he loved. He knew he was miserable. He wasn't risking losing anything, but daily misery and fear that he was going to lose his job. He chose a profession that allowed him to chart his own course. He's his own boss. And he's a great foot surgeon because he was a great engineer. And feet are just, gear, um, not gears, they're just levers and, and, and belts and all kinds of stuff that make, makes them, they're a mechanical device, which I found fascinating. My sister Erin, I've told you the story of my sister Erin who lost her husband um, when she was in her late 40s and she decided she was going to become a nurse and she is now a bachelor of nursing. She has a bachelor of nursing. She's just a little bit younger than me. She has a job that she loves. She's over the moon. She got past the terror barrier that said, you're too old. You've been out of school too long. You don't even know what this could look like. And she said, you know what? God's for me. And I've seen other people do this. And if they can do it, so can I. She told herself a different story. She told herself the story that she could do it. And she leaned in. She stepped forward into growth instead of shrinking backward into safety. Oh, hi, Dawn. I'm glad you're here. So for those of you who have been looking and longing for a change in your life, picture the people on the roller coaster, picture me, <laughs> tears coming down as I'm stepping on and, and locking, locking my belt on. And then picture me leaning in and laughing because the fear went away. I finally got to experience that exhilaration of driving a flying motorcycle, you guys. And it was wonderful. Kelly says, years ago, after completing Baker College in phlebotomy, I was terrified to go to my externship. College is one thing, but doing this in the real world? <laughs> I hear you, Kelly. I can't do this. And my sister explained to me about stepping out of my comfort zone. She said I was going to be fine. And guess what? I was. Yes. Kelly, that's such a great example. That is such a great example. You, you, took the step to get the training, but then when it was time to actually go out and do it, right? But how many people had gone before you that you could see, well, they did it a first time and they're fine. I'll do it a first time and I'll be fine. And then your sister being that supportive, comforting, you can do it person saying, you're going to be fine. Go, go, go. We all need that. We all need that. Thank you for sharing. I'm so glad that you followed through. So glad you followed through, that you didn't stop. So many of us spend all of our time preparing and never actually executing. And it is because of fear. So the story you're telling yourself as you prepare, 
it's time to switch it up and say, okay, there's plenty of people out there executing on their dreams. I can do it too. And it's going to be great. And lean in, step forward into growth instead of shrinking back into safety. All right, you guys, I love you. Thank you for letting me share tonight uh, from my heart, something that really transformed my thinking. And I hope, I know that it's going to transform yours. I'm looking forward to hearing some of your good reports about how you're going to use this. What area are you going to say, all right, you know what? I'm leaning in. I'm getting past that terror barrier. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be the person smiling on that roller coaster. It's all about the story we tell ourselves and we get to choose. We get to choose the story. All right. With that, mwah, take care. Oh, hold on. Oh, hi, Donna. Thanks. And Carol, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in with this comment. I lost my job at John Hancock when I was 37 and had to try something new. And it was really such a blessing. Yeah. We, we feel like we've got our path cut out for us. And then something unexpected happens, that unexpected change. And all of a sudden we're just upside down, but you chose to do something that was scary and also has turned out to be such a great thing, right? You started your own business, which is pretty amazing. So well done, Carol. <laughs> talk about, uh, talk about getting past the terror barrier and stepping forward into growth, right? I love it. All right, you guys. Goodbye. I love you. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. Mwah.